Dr. Walter Willett is a professor of epidemiology and nutrition and chairman of the Department of Nutrition at Harvard School of Public Health and professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Willett graduated from University of Michigan Medical School before obtaining a doctor in public health from Harvard School of Public Health. Dr. Willett has focused much of his work over the last 25 years on the development of methods using both questionnaire and biochemical approaches to study the effect of diet on the occurrence of major diseases. Dr. Willett has published over 1,100 articles, primarily on lifestyle risk factors for heart disease and cancer, and is the most cited nutritionist internationally and is among the five most cited persons in all fields of clinical science. He is a member of the National Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Sciences. I'm Walter Willett, and I'm chair of the Department of Nutrition at Harvard School of Public Health. The major rationale for consuming large amounts of dairy products has been uh, a reduction in fractures because of the high calcium in dairy products. But in reality, we just don't see that. Uh, this is looking across, uh, uh, this is a meta-analysis combining the data from many different studies, all the available studies looking at milk consumption and risk of hip fractures. And even with 30 servings per week compared to less than one and a half servings a week, there's just no hint of a reduction in risk of hip fractures. Milk, as I mentioned, is, is recommended mainly because it's a source of a lot of calcium and phosphorus, uh, and that's supposed to build bones and reduce our fractures. There's not a shred of evidence to support that. Uh, this is a study of a meta-analysis combining all the available literature in the world on milk consumption and risk of fractures during later life. And as you can see, going from uh, less than one and a half glasses of milk per week to over 30 glasses of milk a week. Not a hint of a reduction in fracture risk. We really don't need that much milk. The reality is we don't need that much calcium either. There has been a strong belief in nutrition circles that we need to consume dairy products and high calcium intakes to prevent fractures. But my colleagues here in Sweden had looked at this, could not find any relationship between milk consumption and fracture risk. Here, actually, Sweden has the highest fracture rate in the world and also about the highest milk consumption in the world, too. And it's been an enigma why there should not be lower fracture rates given the high dairy consumption here. But we, didn't, we looked at this in our populations. We also found in adults no relationship between milk consumption and fracture risk. This is a summary of all the world's literature. You can see it's just uh, perfectly flat. Now, it's been said that we especially need the high dairy consumption during adolescence and childhood because gro bones are growing, which we clearly need more calcium. But we've looked at this, this is adolescent consumption of milk and relation to hip fracture risk later in life. Uh, I think for women, there's no benefit during adolescence. And for men, there's actually a positive association. And I think looking at this further, that one of the reasons Sweden and US and Northern Europe has high fracture rates actually is because we drink so much milk. It makes, we have definitive evidence that makes us grow taller and then our bones break more easily because a short stick is harder to break than a long skinny stick, basically. Milk, as I mentioned, where there's been I think it's a very complex topic, but the, this summarizes the relationship across many studies that we combine, looking at increasing intake of milk and risk of hip fractures later in life. And as you can see, there's just absolutely no relationship, with, uh, and no reduction in fracture risk with higher milk consumption. And then we looked at, at milk during high school, where it said, oh, it's really important, you're building up your bones, you've got to drink a lot of milk. I was told I have to drink those four glasses of milk in Madison. And we don't see, again, any hint of a reduction in hip fracture risk with more milk consumption during adolescence. And in fact, in men, there's a strong positive association where the more milk consumption, the higher the risk of fractures. And interestingly, it looks like that's because milk actually accelerates growth and you get taller and so the bones become longer and break easier than short stubby bones. And uh, that seems to be a big part of this. So it does explain, I think, part of the reason why uh, fracture risks are actually higher in milk drinking countries than in non-milk drinking countries. So it's pretty clear we don't need all of that milk. Dairy that I, you heard, I grew up in Madison. 
And uh, two to three servings a day is deficiency in dairy uh, <laughs> uh, from the time when I grew up. And, but still, you look around the world, and most adults do not consume any dairy products. Uh, in Asia, most of Latin America, Africa, and their bones are not falling apart. So that raised some pretty interesting questions about how much milk and dairy we really should be consuming. I, as you heard, grew up in the Midwest, and I know that two to three servings of dairy is deficiency of dairy. <laughs> that you, I grew up, we were supposed to have four glasses of milk a day. But if you really stand back and look at the world, you do wonder about this because most of the world's population does not consume dairy products. Uh, there's uh, very little milk consumption. Uh, there's uh, uh, lac uh, lactase deficiency. People can't tolerate them. In many places, dairy, uh, dairy cattle can't be uh, raised and produced. So, it, and yet those countries are doing just fine with fracture rates. Their bones are not crumbling and falling apart. So there's a little something suspicious about that. In our large cohort study, the Nurses' Health Study, where we enrolled nearly 100,000 women and then followed them for many years, we found that there was no relationship between milk consumption and risk of fractures. Women who drank several glasses a day had no lower risk of hip fractures than women who hardly drank milk at all. Clearly, calcium is an important nutrient, and we have to get some, but it looks like we get enough through our regular diets or just small amounts of dairy products. We don't need high amounts of dairy products to keep fracture risk low. On the other hand, we did find that regular physical exercise was very important for reducing fracture risk. So my conclusion is, if you want to keep fracture risk low, uh, don't drink the milk, but take your cow for a walk. Well, the answer may be somewhat a little bit in between. I think uh, that uh, in general keeping dairy, we, first of all, dairy is not an essential part of diet. Most of the world as adults does not consume dairy or until very recently did not consume dairy and they had low fracture rates. And uh, the main justification used for high dairy consumption is prevention of fractures and that doesn't seem to be that milk is important that way and in fact what we're seeing is uh, that high dairy consumption during adolescence is related to higher risk of fractures later in life. It's probably because it makes our bones grow too long and slender and those are easier to break. This idea that we have to drink milk for healthy bones has never been supported by any data. In fact, we've known for over 50 years that it's actually the countries that drink the most milk actually have by far the highest rates of fractures later in life. Uh, and now we are, I think we're starting to understand uh, part of the reason for this paradox, and part of it is that it does make our, right, the growth factors that make our bones actually too long and more easy to break. Uh, uh, so on the other hand, having a you know, modest amount of cheese and some yogurt and modest amounts, that's okay. Uh, it, it's not necessary.